if a toy line is released but no one ever sees it, did it actually exist? By 1994, the multimedia release strategy for marketing action figures was well established. TV show, comic books, sticker books, bubble baths, serial promotions, all the advertising arms pulling the toy brand Octopus in the same direction. And yet, history records it as a toy line based on an obscure television series with a cult following, even though it was one of the most ambitious, most expensive science fiction television shows ever produced. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is Space Precinct. Space Precinct was a 1994 television series about a police force set in the year 2040 at a time when aliens and humans coexist. We should, uh, we should get working on that. It is a straightforward, dramatic police procedural like CSI, Law & Order, or NCIS. The only difference is that many of the characters are from various alien species and there are spaceships and laser guns. One season of 24 episodes was broadcast in syndication in the United States from 1994 to 1995. It was created by Jerry Anderson, who also created shows like Thunderbirds, Space 1999, and Captain Scarlet. Those names are likely very familiar to fans in the UK, where the show was actually created, but in the US, not so much. Jerry Anderson Productions use a lot of practical, model-based spaceships, effects, and puppets. Like a Jim Henson production, you know it when you see it. The palette of physical special effects associated with Jerry Anderson imbues all of his productions with a distinct visual aesthetic, and that love and utilization of practical effects can be seen all over Space Precinct. Space Precinct as a production was a very big deal. It featured fully animatronic head prosthetics on most of the actors to help bring the alien characters to life, not to mention all the highly detailed model cityscapes, flying cars, and robots. The abundance of practical visual effects separated it from other syndicated science fiction shows of the day like Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Babylon 5. The animatronic head prosthetics make it feel more like the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie or the Dinosaurs sitcom, which was just ending its fourth and final season as Space Precinct was arriving. For all its value on the production end, Space Precinct was the type of show that was designed to go right into syndication, meaning that it was not produced specifically for a large network to air in a prime time spot, at least not in the United States. When it aired would be controlled by these smaller affiliate networks for local broadcasting, so there was no consistency from market to market. Even though Jerry Anderson was a known name in television and movie production historically, even though there were licensees producing supporting materials, those US television affiliates didn't really know who to position this particular show for. Space Precinct looked like it should be a kid's show, but didn't act like a kid's show. And even if it was a show intended for a more mature viewing audience, like Law & Order, would a Law & Order audience buy into a show that had a cast that was 50% Admiral Akbar's? Which time slot does a show like that go in? Vault full of ill-gotten gains, and he stays home on Saturday night and eats pizza? Mmm. Scan the bike serial number. Hot delivery anywhere on Altar, guaranteed. Get out of here. Space Precinct was moved around, usually landing in places where it would be viewed by college students who had stayed up too late, third shift workers who were just getting ready to go in, or purely by accident for everyone else. Not the kids who the totally legitimate toy line was actually designed for. Vivid Imaginations, also based in the UK, produced a full line of 12 3 and 3 quarter inch action figures, two vehicles, and a single 12 inch figure of the main character, Lieutenant Brogan. 13 figures and two vehicles, that's intent. That's a full line of action figures. That's a line you expect to sell. That's a line you have invested in. Just like the show, the expectation was success. Nine points of articulation with construction similar to three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe figures, except lacking an O-ring. They have vintage Kenner Star Wars hips with G.I. Joe elbows and knees. They are basically an action figure hybrid of two of the most popular toy lines of all time. Each figure came with at least one accessory and an ID card. Vivid Imaginations was a new toy company, having been founded the year before Space Precinct aired in 1993 by former members of Matchbox Toys. They knew what they were doing. They were prepared to be on pegs right next to Playmates Star Trek in Star Wars Power of the Force 2. But without a prominent media presence, without any media presence positioned in front of their target market, the toy line was doomed to fail in the US, destined for clearance. 
It's unfortunate timing. The figures were born too soon because this line fits in perfectly with what nostalgia-focused companies are doing today. Super 7's reaction line, Biff Bang Pow over at Entertainment Earth, they're all about obscure licenses with retro-style designs that fit right in with vintage Star Wars. Bigger, higher-profile tie-in action figure lines have struggled to catch on over the years. Despite the technical innovations of the show, the figures couldn't stand on their own. With no other gimmick to hold them together beyond alien cops, they were lost in the anonymity of the crowd in the toy aisle. Space Precinct was an ambitious science fiction television production, a programming no-show, and an action figure oddity. Audio's wrong. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, please share this video. And if you're in the position to help the channel grow, visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toy galaxy. And let us know down in the comments if you've ever seen Space Precinct toys or the show itself. It's weird, man. It's weird and ambitious and strangely visually hypnotic. You can probably find some of the episodes here on YouTube if you've ever dreamed about a cop show starring Mon Calamari. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it's a trap.